Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. Our break from the wind is coming to an end. Conditions will be getting far worse as we head into the overnight hours. That's a live shot from our sky cam in South Fargo showing Interstate 94. It looks much better than it did during our 6 o'clock newscast, but just in the last hour, it's deteriorated somewhat. We hope that you're in a warm place and can stay there until all of this blows over. Right now, no travel is advised in south-central North Dakota. That includes the cities of Bismarck, Jamestown, Valley City, and Ellendale. Basically, it's I-29, or it's I-94, rather, all the way from Fargo to Bismarck. Now, the same alert is in effect for northeastern North Dakota. That includes the cities of Grand Forks, Hillsboro, and the surrounding area. I-29 is shut down. That is from Fargo all the way to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And there's a little stretch there. You can see it there from I-29 over to Wapaton. That road, Highway 13, is also closed. No travel is advised for Castleton, Fargo, Wapaton, Lisbon, and the surrounding areas. Let's continue our storm coverage now by going to Hutch, who joins us with a first look at your no-wait weather, weather planner. Hutch, it's getting pretty bad out there. Mike, it is, and uh, conditions are not at their worst right now. In fact, if anything, we've gotten a little bit of a break. We're still expecting widespread 5 to 9 as we highlight what you can expect. Isolated places could see upwards of a foot of snow drifts. Over 5 feet will be possible as our winds pick back up to 50 miles per hour. Here's a look around the region and we do have some horizontal flakes flying in a few places. Once again, Dickey County, Ellendale, Oaks, your area has been hit hard. Highway 11, you cannot even see the road surface. Gusts today peaked at 60 miles per hour. Here is the latest radar, Mike, and we see an enhanced band of snow right smack dab here here into the uh, Red River Valley right now as we uh, highlight that for you from basically Clay and Cass County up through western parts of Marshall County, Minnesota. That includes Grand Forks and Fargo. The snow is all the way through eastern North Dakota from Devil's Lake and western Stutzman County here into the valley. The snow will last all night. The wind picks up. I'm expecting after 2 a.m. It's really going to get bad again. That wind will last all day tomorrow as the snowfall will be ending in the morning hours, but the wind will make things very difficult throughout the day. And we should also point out that uh, the Minnesota side of things, the no travel advisories have been lifted. All state and federal highways in west central Minnesota, it's gotten better there, but just for the short period of time. That's right. We have some right. closures elsewhere. Okay, yeah. thanks. Well, if you made it home safely tonight, good for you. Quite a few people ran into trouble, usually in the form of a crash, hitting the ditch, or a snowbank. Valley News Team's Alexandra Kay is braving the elements to update us on the conditions. She's outside right now and talking about all the mishaps. Alexandra? Yes, Mike, as you can see, it is cold, it is windy, and the snow continues to blow through the metro tonight. Take a look at this car behind me. You can see that fresh snow drift is piling up against that car. Now this snow drift goes all the way up to my hip. The driver of this car may be waiting for a tow and they may be waiting a while longer. I spoke with a towing company earlier and they told me at their peak around six o'clock, they were slammed with calls and had a waiting list with 30 names on it. Since then, those numbers have shrunk as people are going home and staying home. But if you need a tow now, you're still looking at an hour to two hour long wait. Since early this morning until late this afternoon, Fargo Dispatch received at least 60 calls regarding these terrible weather conditions. Some of those calls were even about pets and other animals being left outside. Overall, Mike, there is a lot going on out here and none of it's good. So stay home, stay warm, stay safe because it is cold and miserable out here. Reporting live in Fargo, Alexandra Kay, Valley News Live. Good advice. Thanks so much. We'll go back outside in about 15 minutes for another live report on efforts to clean the streets in the FM metro area. In other news tonight, a man uh, accused in an international fentanyl trafficking operation that was uncovered after the death of a North Dakota teen is facing new charges for obstruction of justice. Stephen Pinto is one of more than 30 people indicted for dealing the powerful opioid in the United States and Canada. Deaths from the drug have been reported in North Dakota, North Carolina, New Jersey, and Oregon. Pinto is scheduled for trial in April on numerous charges, including conspiracy to import controlled substances, resulting in death. 
It's Friday. It's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 26-year-old Cody Ridley is wanted for burglary. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on his whereabouts. Police are warning you of a high-risk sex offender that's moving into the Devil's Lake area. 57-year-old Daniel Shearn is living at 225 West Walnut Street in Devil's Lake. He was convicted of a crime against someone who was under the age of 14. North Dakota is considered one of the nation's leaders in drone technology. Lawmakers are creating policies for consumer use to fly drones that aren't in their direct line of sight. It's amazing to me how North Dakota leads in this industry. Uh, we're talking about beyond line of sight, uh, drone usage, and the ability for North Dakota to do things other states can't. It's going to attract uh, industry and business. The program implements LIDAR, which uses ultraviolet and infrared frequencies to map out a landscape without relying on light. North Dakota is one of only seven states with a UAS test site used mainly for flood and land surveillance. The folks over at Fargo Brewing Company made the national news tonight, and that's because something special is brewing there. NBC's Kevin Tibbles explains how Cans and Canines is inspiring America. Serving up the Bow Wow Brewskis in North Dakota to help Fido's in need find a new home. Who doesn't like dogs and beer? The folks at the Fargo Brewing Company have a soft spot for our four-legged friends. And to assist in getting dogs in a local shelter adopted, they've printed their names, faces, and fun facts on the latest run of beer cans. Busy enjoys sleeping in and meeting new dogs. Moby loves long walks. The brewery's Aaron Hill hopes this first round of pints and pups showcasing six canines is a doggone hit. The goal is to get these dogs adopted and then uh, maybe again in uh, three or four months kind of do a new batch of dogs. This guy just needs some TLC. Yes, he does. Jared Ryan brainstormed the beer mugshots idea, modeled after missing kids on milk cartons. This is Virginia and this is her beer can. It could help save a life. It could just open eyes to a dog that maybe you wouldn't think would be for you, but very well could be. Super sweet, and she hugs, which is great. That forever home is out there for her. Raising awareness while raising a glass to help a few underdogs have their day. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Fargo. You can see them all and all other available dogs for adoption by visiting the For Love of Dogs website. Valley News Live, 10 at 10, continues with No Wait Weather. Mike, three years ago, I did just that, and that's where Pedro came from. All of you have seen Pedro, my puppy. He prognosticates with me from time to time, and he says, look out, more snow on the way. In fact, our visibility has reduced. Some people say, Hutch, how do you measure visibility at night? Well, we look for those distinctive uh, features, those landmarks. We cannot see the hospital over there at Sanford out to the west, so our visibility has been reduced to under a mile in the FM area. Winds still southeasterly here, but as the storm system rolls through, the backside winds will gust from the northwest and they are already up to 50 miles per hour or better at times in the western Dakotas. For us, we'll take the break from the wind. We need it, but the snow continues to fall. Now, this is new, light, flaky, powdery snow moving through the valley. We've seen an enhancement here. And what I'm talking about there is the darker blue shades. That indicates that we have some heavier, uh, more rapidly accumulating snow from Grand Forks, Thief River Falls, and Crookston down through Fargo-Moorhead. We're starting to see the edge make its way out of central North Dakota and pushing into our eastern third. Fargo-Moorhead, all the way out to near Holly, we have a healthy band of snow. This is lifting northward. More will be pushing through Moorhead and Fargo as we go through the upcoming couple of hours. That accumulation will add up pretty quickly. But here we have some white pixels up here in Polk County, western Polk County, right between the Crookston and uh, Grand Forks area near Fisher. Not so much fun there as we'll have rapid accumulation. Now, again, Devil's Lake, snowfall expected there, and our models here at Valley News Live showed you the potential for snow in northeast North Dakota was going to be significant. It looks like that's going to be the case. Nonetheless, blizzard conditions continue. Hint, hint, even though we have a break from the wind right now, it's going to return, and it's going to last. Here's a look at the big picture. Snow exiting up toward Duluth. Things quieting down in southern Minnesota, but the roads there remain tough. We told you about road closures from Fargo down through uh, portions of South Dakota. Cold air is punching in from the north and west, but we're holding on to the teens and 20s right now. That won't last, but 
really temperatures not the story right now what is is the snow and it will continue from the red river valley and east and at that band out to the west pushes through we're gonna have one two or three more bands move through the fargo area and through grand forks so we will have overnight accumulations that will total up in eastern north dakota and northwest minnesota by morning single digit temperatures about three in the morning we're going to start hearing the winds whistle again as we'll have gusts over 40 miles per hour. I do not think we'll top 60 mile per hour gusts like we had today in Fargo, but this is going to be long-lived wind that comes from the Northwest throughout the entire day, starting at about 3 or 4 a.m. and lasting all the way until night, as we'll see the snow exiting in the morning for most areas. It's going to be that blowing and drifting snow that keeps things impossible for travel in many areas throughout the day, as temperatures will be sub-zero by the time we get to your Saturday night, heading into a very chilly Sunday morning. So the wind will last all day. Still expecting five to nine inches where you see the dark blue shades here. That includes Fargo. That includes Grand Forks. I think we all have that enhanced band that's been in the Devil's Lake Basin through just west of Stutzman County that could see some five to nine totals out to the west as well. And I do think Ellendale and Oaks, once again, you'll be closer to that eight to maybe even 10 inches. You've been getting hit hard with every system. I should just up your snow totals for every forecast system the way things have gone this season for you. All right, eight single digit degrees tomorrow. Snow ending mid morning, wind lasting all day. Winds causing cold temperatures to arrive late in the day. We'll be sub zero by the evening. Afternoon temperatures below zero out to the west. We'll maintain a zero or just above from the Red River Valley and points east for your Saturday afternoon, but it will be blustery. It will not be blustery or blizzardy, says Rowdy in Key, <laughs> Key Largo, Florida. Thanks for rubbing it in here we can all dream all right let's take a look at that planning forecast because we have a lot to talk about there blustery conditions all day blizzard conditions continue and then as we head into the nighttime hours we start our sunday off at 13 below but sunday should be much quieter and we should have a chance to clear out some of that snow that'll be blowing around all day on saturday with northwest winds martin luther king celebrated on monday 18 below our temperature first thing in the morning but we do get to climb out of the cellar, even though it will be, well, short-lived, but still pleasant. Temperatures rising up to near 30 degrees as we close out the work week with a chance of a few flakes on Thursday. But all in all, our system tonight taking a bit of a break. Don't let that fool you tomorrow and try to make it somewhere. That wind is going to cause some tricky travel conditions. I can promise you your storm team will be on top of it first thing in the morning, online, on Facebook, on the air, on the go, where you are, we will be there. Thanks. You bet. Here's some advice, too. As the storm continues, make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can stay up on the weather anytime, anywhere. You're going to get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free.